Praise the Lord and greetings. Happy to see you today. I'm excited about Jesus in spite of the sadness that is in the world today. I'm glad he is my light and my salvation. As the psalmist said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. My salvation is in another place. The kingdom of our God is in another place. Uh, this is very bad, but we're left here in this time to pray and to stay in faith and to love. So let's be excited about what Jesus is doing in spite of everything that's going on around. We cannot take on sadness because we have joy. We cannot take on melancholy because we have peace. And we have an assurance in Jesus Christ in this hour that when this is all gone, he's yet in authority and in charge. And we know the paracletus, the Holy Spirit, is with us. We're excited about God today. Have a powerful word directly from the kingdom of God unto you where you are right now. We're going to go into worship. Immediately following worship, we'll be right into the word today. God bless you. Be excited about Jesus, and let's pray for the world. God bless. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We lift your name on high, God. So worthy, Jesus. We come to lift up your name, God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Oh, 
hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. For you're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love. place in the Bible where Elisha, the prophet, was surrounded by armies. And then Elihezer, I believe is his name, was his servant. And he said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And he prayed and said, God, show him what we're surrounded by. And he prayed for his eyes and he was able to see chariots of fire surrounding them that were greater than what they seen in the natural in the world. My God. I feel that thing in the spirit right now. 
My God, we're going to go right into our word today. We have a word today that may not be a normal word, but it is the word that the Lord has released in my life to release to you for your life. And we walk in the kingdom of God and we understand the order of God. So when a man of God is called, he should have a word in season at all times. If he is of the grace gifts, everybody that's of the grace gifts right now should be hearing from God. And if they're not, they're counterfeit. If they're running around here trying to tell you all kind of stuff that's contrary to what's going on and, you, and the whole world is upset, uh, record numbers of people dying every week, uh, moving in South Africa, Brazil, moving in America. Wait, wait, wait a minute. The highest death tolls right now is in America, Brazil, and South Africa. America, Brazil, in South Africa. You know, South Africa was one of those places that completely dominated that culture and took over and instituted apartheid and slavery. America, oh, it was one of those places. Brazil, oh, it was one of those places. So three of the main forces of money and wealth and slavery and degenerative actions, that's where the movement is. Wake up, world, and listen. Something is happening. Something is happening. Pay attention. Pay attention. Let us go right into our Bible today. I'm going to start in John. You know what? I'm going to take this jacket off. It's getting a little warm up in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There you go. I feel better already. 11th chapter of the book of John, we're going to start right in the first verse. It says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Hmm. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of the world, because he seeth the light of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Uh, let's let's go over here to the book of uh, stay right there in John and go to the first chapter of the book of John. First chapter of the book of John. I'm just going to read uh, five verses. It says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life." And the life was the light of men. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Since we said in the beginning was word, let's just hold our word and make our confession. This is my Bible, the living word of God. It's not only about God, but it is God. I believe he is who he says he is. I believe he can do what he says he can do. I believe I am who he says I am. I believe I can do what he says I can do, and I believe I have what he says I have in him, what he says I have on earth. I have eternal life because of him. His word is alive, and it's powerful, and it's full of faith. 
changing me as I speak. Today I hear it in faith. Today I speak it in faith. Today I act on the word of God and I watch my life find purpose, direction, guidance, and abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I make this confession and I say amen, amen. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to deal with today. You would have thought I'm getting ready to deal with Lazarus being raised from the dead. But I'm going to go in there and find what the Lord gave me in both of these texts. Okay, I can teach the word of God in the beginning with the word. But there's something very powerful in this one particular verse that I want to just zone in on. I want to zone in on these here verses right here where it says, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Because he what? Seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. I want to deal with light in him. And I want to deal with Operation Light. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, help us, direct us to hear your word. And I ask that you would move mightily in me. Release that that you have planted in me for this hour, for this time, and for this moment. In the mighty name of Jesus, we need you now, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. When I say Operation Light, we find that Jesus, in more than one occasion, said that I am the light of the world. We also know that in the book of Psalms, it says the Lord is my light and my salvation. It's very important that we begin to identify light. It's almost impossible for me to move into this without giving you an explanation of light. The Old Testament light is ore. It means illumination or illuminary. It says in every sense, bright, including lightning. Ah, uh, it's, it's very powerful that we understand this light thing because in the beginning, God said, let there be light. First thing he brought into existence was light in the beginning. It says God created the earth. And then it begins to talk about light. The first thing he brought into the scene is light. Now we see light and understanding it being like lightning, but in the New Testament it's called false and it is to shine or make manifest, luminous. And then it also said fire. Fire indicates movement. Well, this is so much and it is beyond human comprehension by the time they were reading it because you would only see light as far as the sun. But now that we have an understanding of what light is, we understand that light has electricity in it. We understand that when they began to harness light and make the light bulbs that we see here, they had to harness something called electricity, the electric field. They had to figure it out. So when God breathed living breath into man and he became a living nephesh or a living soul, we see that as just breath. But there was something else because God is a light. So there was something else being breathed into him. And he was literally talking about electrical impulse. Do you know as you're standing right now that in spite of the oxygen that is allowing you to breathe, there are electrical impulses moving through your brain, telling your lungs to inhale and to exhale. There is electricity electricity inside of you. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus says that when a man walks mm, in the light, he is of a different character because he recognized that this electricity is connected to the mainframe. He understands that he can do nothing without Jesus. He understands that there is something inside of him beyond oxygen, beyond anything that is within this earth. And this is what he calls as light. My God, light. It's very important because he speaks about, but if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. I'm going to I'm, I'm go right over here to the first chapter. I, I, I don't want to exhaust this message. I want to take my time. And in the beginning of John, he, he begins to say in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. My God, this, this, this is what we're, in him was life, and the light was the life of men. I, I'm just going to look at Genesis. Hold your finger right there. Let's go to Genesis. Let's see this. I want you to see it with your eyes. 
In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness, and darkness was up on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved up on the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the what? Darkness. God divided. God divided. Oh, let, let, let me read this in, in, in the uh, Amplified. Mm. Let's read verse 4. It says, And God saw the light was good, suitable, pleasant. And he approved it. And God separated the light from the darkness. He separated. It's a separation between the light. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Listen. The first thing that God does when he comes into your life is light goes off. It feels like a light bulb went off. All of a sudden, what you didn't understand, you immediately understand. And it says that Jesus in him was life, but it was the light of men. So in other words, from that day forward, we are called children of light. Why? Because Christ takes up residence. There is an electrical impulse inside of you that moves all the way from the Orients of God, where he is, from everything beyond eons and eons of time, trillions and trillions of light years away. They don't, a year means nothing if you can move by a sound year because they master sound. But there is something called a light year, my God. And a light year moves so fast that they're still trying to find a vehicle that can move at the speed of light. But God put light inside of human beings that your mind can go back to when you were six years old in light seconds. Uh, nothing else can do it like the mind that he created in you when he put his life and his light inside of you. That light is so powerful that it can permeate light and time. My God. Light years. So when we think of Jesus, the light and the light. We need to know that this is the light. When people start telling you things like, ah, I just don't believe that they're dancing like that in the spirit. Uh, you get filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and electrical impulses uh, come from the kingdom of God. Come all the way from heaven and you'll hear a song that say, this is how I praise him and your feet will go to moving. Uh, and you'll hear a song that say, this is why we praise him and your tongue will begin to rock like under because it's electrical life, light is in him, my God. The light of Jesus Christ is inside of you. That means that he can send an electrical impulse at any moment, at any time. You know your Apple phone got a little connection to it that it'll tell you it's too hot. Ah, you leave it outside and you plug it up and leave it in the sun. It'll say shutting down too hot. How did it get the signal, my God? That means that it was an electrical impulse, a signal that was sent from the device when they created to say it's too hot. You, you're getting ready to self-destruct if we do not shut it down. Well, that's what my God does when he sends an electrical impulse to your praise. When he sends an electrical impulse to let you know the joy of the Lord is your strength. When he sends an electrical impulse and the word kicks off and says, oh, stop complaining. My grace is sufficient. And you learn how to appreciate what you have, who you are, and where you're at. And you stop complaining. Don't get in the line of the complainer. Oh, woe is me. There's some people that had way more woes than you. The average individual in America, I don't care if it's racism, I don't care what it is, you ain't got no old woes is me. Get off of old woes is me. Once Jesus came, in him was life, and it was the light of men. You have life. And you don't have normal life. You have abundant life. Don't let the devil twist your mind thinking that there's a problem with Jesus. Don't have a problem with the entire creator of the earth that had that all things consist by. Be careful because you're going to end up being what they call lukewarm. In other words, he's all right, but I need to do my own thing. He's all right. I'm a Christian, but I'm going to do my own thing. No, 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 no. Get the word of God. You got to fasten your life by this word of God because you got to walk by faith. And the word is faith, period. 
you're going to have to walk by faith. Most of you are living because of this social order in America. As bad as it might be, it's a good social order. You can say that. They, they, you, you live in a good country. Oh, yeah, it's racism. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. It's all kind of different things. We understand that. But I want you to know something. If God positioned you, you educated yourself properly, you have the right information, so you're just not just talking. And he also put purpose in your life and put you on the front line. Just be ready to die for the front line. Don't, don't be one of these people that don't want to die. Don't be one of these old back line people want to put everybody else up front, but you don't want to die. Be willing to go all the way out. But understand that when you get ready to go up against forces that are beyond you, there is going to be a price to pay. And when I say die, I don't mean physically die. You may have to die to your career. You may have to die to your education because the devil's going to come after you and he's going to come after you strong. You may have to die to your credit. You may have to die a whole lot. Of stuff. So make sure when you take up a battle to go up against a system that you have the right resources and the right alignment with people to prepare for war. The Bible says, make sure you take wise counsel before you prepare for war. You can't be thinking this stuff is no joke out here. You got to be serious. And these new young people, God has equipped them with education, but they're going to have to have some real light inside of them in this hour because darkness, my God, does not have the power to overdo light. They don't talk about dark years. I wonder why. They talk about darkness and it was a dark time. But you know what? Darkness doesn't have anything but death in it. That's it. You stumble, you fall, you will wake up in a dark house, you hit your toe and can't walk for three days. You hit it on the same bed because you couldn't see. All right? And, and when people keep you in the dark, they do bad things to you. A lot of us have been in the dark, especially African-Americans, uh, Indians, and we didn't even realize what was happening. I mean, they signed treaties. They didn't know. They, they trusted some people, and they gave them blankets and started chemical warfare, or biological warfare, smallpox blankets, killed them all off. There's so many different things that have taken place over time, and we sit there, and we, the first thing we do is we keep seeing white. But whoever's in charge will do that. Who's ever in charge will do that. It don't matter. If you go right to the middle of the biggest project in Chicago, the drug dealer that's in charge will overtake every household, will put everybody on drugs, will, will turn your sons into gangsters and everything, and he ain't white. All right. He just got the power and the money and he's ready to go. So whoever gets the power and the money is capable of doing some real strong, bad, demonic stuff to humanity, period. Don't matter. They just happen to be the ones. That's it. But they just happened to be in touch with the name of Jesus. And because they were in touch with the name of Jesus, other people were calling on the wrong guy. That's all. They just calling on the wrong guy. You can't call no no, no son God to come and kill bullets. You got to call and get some wisdom so that you can learn how to get a bullet. All right, if they got one, you can get one. It's in the earth. It's created. But they were calling on the wrong gods. And God was setting a separation. And grace was in place. Why did he let this happen? Well, if it didn't happen, we wouldn't be in America and I wouldn't be on TV right now. And some of the technology and the things that exist in the world today would have not been created. Don't matter who built it. God built it all. He created you. You only, you only here for a, a, a vapor of time. Whoever you are, you're just here for a vapor of time. And the older you get, you'll know time is running out. So redeem the time while you have it. Enjoy the life that is put in front of you. And make plans to prosper. And make plans to walk in the light. Now, I, I want to go into this part here where it says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm. Uh, in the Amplified, it said, and the light shines on in the darkness. The light shines on in the darkness. For the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out or absorbed it or appropriated it and is unreceptive to it. No matter what death is doing, no matter what the world is going through, no matter how bad things are. The light that is in the children of light. I said Operation Light. Why did I say Operation Light? Because this is a time unlike any other time. And whenever you get in a time where you see the degenerative power of lies and falsehood, the, Jesus said very plain that 
The devil is a liar and he was a liar from the beginning. So there's so many lies out here from continent to continent, country to country. There are different pools. There are different people threatening people and all kind of stuff. You got secretaries of state threatening people. Just because you got an army don't mean you got the way. All right. There's things that can happen. We don't want to have a bunch of hostility in the land because hostility will spark a problem. We don't know where the problem's going to spark at. We don't know where people are because everybody underestimates people. Most people that are dead today, they underestimated somebody they had a problem with. When we talk about street language, they underestimated somebody that they had a problem with and they thought that they were bad, but they weren't bad enough. So you need to know that there are countries who thought they were bad, but they're not bad enough. So you need to know, never underestimate who, what is going on in the earth. So you need to stay in light and not in darkness. And the Lord is my light and my salvation. My protection and my joy is in the word of God because it is the word made incarnate. All right. In the beginning, the word. In the beginning, the word. This is your blueprint for light. This is how light works. And if you're going to live in the light and walk in the light, you need to know the difference. Now, in our text, when we were looking at Lazarus, it's very important because Jesus wanted him to see death. He said he was sleeping. So that means death doesn't have the power to take him and destroy him. He said he will sleep. They said, well, if he sleep, if he'll get rest. He said, no, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. He's gone. Where is he at? He's in darkness. Where's darkness? In death. Jesus also had to go into darkness and deal with death so that he could conquer it for us so that we could have life eternal in him. So death is always connected to darkness. So the darkness that has layered down on the earth right now is a lot of death taking place. Thousands of people are dying from somebody coughing on them, from somebody, and, and all the different things that you have weaknesses that are in this Bible are being exploited by the spirit of death right now. If, if, if you're obese and this thing hits you, you have double the problem. If you got diabetes because you decide to eat cake all day and, and not deal with the spirit of glutton, you're going to have a problem with death. It, because why? You are messing with the temple of God and God declared that if you destroy this temple, you'll be destroyed. He declared when he began to deal with the children of Israel, what did he tell them? He said, I'm going to straighten your diet out first. Don't eat this. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. Don't eat this. Eat this. Eat that. Eat this. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. He began to tell them the importance of it. My God, the importance of taking the word of God and making it a part of your internal life. And he began to instruct why you need to eat correctly. And just in case you haven't been eating correctly, we're going to take communion today because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down of imaginations and everything, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Let's just take communion right now, right in the middle of this, while we write in this word right now. We're going to go ahead and take communion. Grab your communion. I said we would take it this week. Those of you that already have it, I'm trying to get this little top open. It's in here somewhere. I done popped the other top. Let's see if I can get this. Here we go. There we go. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed by darkness, said this is my body that will be broken for you and as often as you eat of this my body you do it in remembrance of me let's remember that in him was life and in his life was the light of life let's partake of the light of the world Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. He shed his blood for the remission of all sins that I've done before, all sins that I'll ever do. We partake of the blood of the covenant of Jesus Christ.
Hey, glory. Whoa, Shandarabaka. Every time I partake of the body and the blood, I feel those electrical impulses inside. I feel them inside. I feel the light. Darkness does not have the power to take you again once Christ comes into your life. Let's get ready to end here. I'm going to pick this up next week. I want to go to 1 John, the first chapter. I'm going to look in there later. I could go and find some things we're going to look at next week and try to find out, yeah, they did me like this. Yeah, they doing us wrong and everything. You know, you ever been to church with people who sit there and look at you and point at you? Ah, uh, he was talking to you today. Oh, yeah, God was talking to you today. Oh, yeah, I know he was talking to you. No, he was talking to you, but you was too busy worrying about me as if you were my light. But you're not my light. Jesus is my light and the Lord of my salvation. In him was life and that life was the light of me that light literally is the electrical impulse that sends signals to you all the time do you know if you fall out right now and they say they had a heart problem do you know that they they can give you mouth to mouth resuscitation but if there's an aed a little electrical thing and they say step back step back because it's too much power if you're too close it might get to you and it'll short circuit your life and they hit that heart with that electricity boom that heart kicked back in so when God said, let there be a light, he said, let there be electric force in the earth to walk and live in men. That thing that's beating in you, there's an electric force running that thing. It ain't, did you plug up in the battery? No. But boy, if you plug into the worship of God, and if you plug in, all of a sudden, your mind gets to have the imaginative power, the ability to believe beyond what you see. Your mind has the ability to see light years away, light years away. He'll put you in light seconds, and you'll be able to imagine the creative power of you and another person, and what kind of child you can create what their lives will be you'll be speaking to your grandchildren and the children are still there why because god will give you the, the vision of light years ahead light years and anytime god talks he talks in generations let us wrap up here today go to first john first chapter <clears throat> it's only 10 verses but i'm gonna read mainly one through seven but i'm gonna go ahead and put the eight nine and ten in there today for you just so that you know. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked up on and our hands have handled of the word of life. Talking about Jesus. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. He's telling you about Jesus and was manifested unto us, me, you, manifested. He's talking to us, this is for us. Woo, the life was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, oh, let, let's see this. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no, no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. From what? All sin. We're going to look at this next week. It says, if we say, I want to read this to you. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. It's very important that you understand. 
Your flesh will always sin. It will never stop sinning. Your flesh will always sin. Your spirit has been reconciled and given righteousness. But God says that I don't want the flesh to be able to influence you. So I am informing you that your flesh is going to always sin. And if you ever think you don't have no sin, you're a liar. Means the liar is on board and you're operating from the flesh instead of the spirit. We're going to deal with next week in walking in the spirit and walking in the light. Because to walk in the light is to walk in the spirit. And to live in the light is to live in the spirit. So it is very important at this hour that we begin to understand that God is light. Why did he say, let there be light? And he separated it. God is holy. You're going to have to know when to pick up the fights of the world and pick up the fight of the kingdom. Be very careful. We have to go and get souls, get them developed, and get them moving in the right directions toward God. We, it's not time to appease them, to prove to them who God is. You don't want to trust him. Go down there to Kaiser. Go down there to St. Mary's Hospital, whatever, and they might not even let you in the door. But I promise you, if you hit your knees wherever you're at and call on Jesus for real, I promise you, you're going to see the glory of God come in your heart. The anointing of God will move in your household. You, you, you don't have to worry about being turned away from the hospital to heaven. You might get turned away from the hospital now if you're sick. Matter of fact, I've, we, we've been hearing reports of people that go, we got people we know. They flew from New Jersey and went to Germany. They wouldn't even let them in the hospital. Didn't even know what was wrong. Wrong. Didn't want to let them in. Their face had blown up, temperature and everything else. But God, when she sent the pictures out and the people started praying, whoom, that thing turned around. Don't tell me what God won't do in the power of prayer. I said, why they put their pictures out? Because somebody was going to start praying. Somebody was going to tap in the glory and was going to release that light through the body of Christ, the same light. He said, if you walk in the light, you're going to be together. You're going to be interconnected. Light means nothing if it's not connected. If you ever look inside a light bulb, you'll see it's got a lot of little dots that connect to, dots that connect to the main source that connect to together. If you look at the power that's running through these walls right now, you got a negative and you got a neutral and then you got a positive. And if, if they're not, if one of them's not in there, it won't work. And if the power's in there by itself, it'll short circuit everything. It's got to have a negative and it's got to have a neutral. And that's what makes it keep on moving. That's why you're made in the same image. Three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, spirit, soul, and mind. Heart and spirit is the same. Mind and soul is the same. Flesh and body is the same. You need to know that. You need to know that everything was made according to light and how light glory of God, the power of God, and know for sure that you are children of light. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, the light of the world, into your heart so that you can be flooded with light, I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ right now. Very, very simple. All you do is let your heart meet the condition. He knows what it is. He made that heart. He's the one got the electrical impulse moving right now. Have you standing right here looking at this right now? He's the one. He's the one that says, no, you didn't come all the way last time. You was at the door. Come on through the door. I'm standing at the door knocking right now. Say, Jesus, my heart is ready to receive you as my Lord, my Savior. I believe you came that you might die for me. And because you died, I can have life eternal. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Receive me into your kingdom. Jesus, come into my heart. Father, I thank you for sending life eternal and manifested in my life today and i thank you for the gospel that i am hearing today in my ears that i might receive salvation say jesus come into my life change me make me brand new if you said that prayer right now you're saved get somewhere be somewhere or find you a bible he can circumvent man and somebody's already on the way to make sure you can know him make sure you can know him and remember, he is the light of the world. You're going to have to cut darkness off from your life. Start deleting people. Start changing your music agenda. Oh, I want to keep all that. Well, you don't want light. Darkness and light have nothing in common. This is the time you're going to have to make up your mind if you want light or darkness. There's some things that are borderline, but there is a difference. There is a difference. And one thing for sure, 
Love is love. Hate is hate. You can't operate in both. Light is light. Darkness is darkness. You can't operate in both. One or the other. May God bless you and keep you. We're going to go right on in to uh, our announcements today. Please be encouraged. We're trying to make some big power moves this month and uh, do some things. I want you to keep it up in prayer. The Lord blesses you. Make sure you let us know. If you want to sow a seed directly to the new studio, make sure you sow that seed, and it will be used directly for that. God's doing some great things. We need a bigger location. We're not trying to move back into church buildings right now. Thank God that uh, he gave us direction and guidance not to go back into a church because it didn't work like they thought, and I knew it wasn't. And I began to teach you when we started this year that that pandemic was coming is here, and they're not finished yet. I don't know how far. I don't know what's happening. But thank God that I have not heard any reports of anybody from Greater Works or anybody that we walk with or that is in communion with us that's getting this word of how we're being fed today, being afflicted by it. So thank God. It's been close to people. But nobody's been afflicted. We're going to stay in prayer. The prayer line is staying in there praying for you. And know beyond a doubt that your God will never fail. And he can't fail. And he has you. God bless you. Be encouraged. That was an amazing word. Um, now it's time for our offering confession. So if you could please repeat after me. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word. There is provision in my house. I am a cheerful giver, a seed sower, and a harvest reaper. My harvest includes houses, lands, checks in the mail, open doors and promotions, business opportunities, money in my hands, debts canceled, inheritance and more. My seed is physical and financial, so I expect a physical and financial harvest. According to the word of God, as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. So I give in faith, expecting my harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us bless the offering. Lord, bless this offering. Bless all the people that were able to give tithes and offer. Also bless the people who are not able to give and provide for them so that they may. In Jesus' name, amen. You can send your tithes and offerings two ways, through Zelle, which uh, the handle is 562-659-4127 or Cash App. The handle is Greater Works. If you like, you can send your check uh, by mail to P.O. Box 11744, Carson, California, 90749. Hello, Greater Works Ministry family. This is Minister Annie here, and I'm here with the announcements. Now, as you know, we are here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our morning service here on Facebook Live. Now, if you're unable to attend the live, don't worry, we got you covered. We have our YouTube channel at Vincent Fields Ministries where all of the messages are posted. Now, when you visit our channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But most importantly, we want you to share the word of God with your family and friends. Now, speaking of your family and friends, if you know of anyone who likes to get up early in the morning for prayer, our morning prayer starts at 6.30 to 7 a.m. So you can call in and join in with the morning prayer. Google Classroom is now available for our elementary and middle school age kids. Now listen, I'm super excited about this because Dr. M has come up with an amazing way to keep our kids interested in Christ during this difficult time. She's come up with videos, there's puppets. I've watched some of the videos and I was just like, oh my God, it was just amazing. So if you would like for your kids to be a part, do not forget to have them log on to our Google Classroom here at Great Works Ministries. Prophetic Prayer with Evangelist Thomas is still available every Wednesday at 12 p.m. So if you're looking for a little pick-me-up, a little boost in the middle of the week, please join in to Prophetic Prayer with Evangelist Thomas at 12 p.m. on Wednesdays. Speaking of Wednesdays, 
our Bible study. First, I want to thank all of you for sharing the link with your family and friends. Each week we see that the audience is increasing and increasing and we know that that's the way that God's word is being spread all around the world during this time. So thank you guys so much for your support and your dedication to our Bible studies on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The Women of Sophia is coming back very soon with Table Talk with Dr. M and Elder Mitzi. You guys do not want to miss this event. Now, once we get all of the dates and the times together, we will definitely send out our invitation and letting you guys know the time of recording because most likely it will be on Zoom. But if not, it will be here live on Facebook. So just want to let you guys know what's going on with the church that we're still moving forward. We want to thank all of you that have visited our Facebook and our Instagram and our YouTube channel. We definitely see you guys and we are so grateful. If you're not a member of the Greater Works family and this is your very first time joining in on our live, leave us a comment down below, leaving us just a wave or emoji letting us know that this is your first time joining in on our live. We want to acknowledge all of our first time visitors and we want to thank you guys for joining in, for sharing the message and just for being you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the service thus far. We thank you so much for joining in and we'll talk to you later. God bless. Hello, Greater Works Ministries.